so first of all, thank you. Thank you, Donald. And uh, thank you to all of you. And uh, <clears throat> before, before to start and showing any, any images about uh, projects, I would like to just to share with you some, uh, some thoughts about, uh, about architecture. And, uh, and I want to be very, first of all, very honest. So I think that uh, I am, uh, how do you say, out of time somehow. And I am uh, out of time because, uh, not because I feel to be old, but because I feel that uh, our contemporary culture doesn't fit very well with uh, is the episteme of architecture. And, uh, and for this reason, it's very difficult to speak about architecture when the contemporary culture is based mainly, and not mainly, in the techne and science uh, knowledge. But techne and science knowledge has a specific paradigm that uh, oblige us to, to think and to see the world in a certain way and not in another way. So, but before to start, uh, and also I change also my, the idea that I had to, to talk with you now, because in these days, yesterday I saw with, uh, with Roberto, some, uh, some work made by Miss Van der Rohe. We saw the, uh, the Dominion, uh, Dominion Hall, this beautiful piece. But, uh, and then I was uh, two days before in, uh, in Chicago, and, uh, and there are other beautiful pieces made by, by me. But the question is, and I was reflecting a little bit uh, on him now, but uh, nobody are complaining because he repeats many times his projects. So, if you go to Berlin, if you go to Montreal, uh, if you go here in, uh, in Toronto, you, you can go in uh, New York. So, more or less, he did the same project. Oh, more or less. So, but uh, there is one question on the bottom of this more or less, there is one question, one question that today is really awful and nobody wants to, to hear this word, is the perfection. The perfection is the goal of, uh, of Miss. But there is another question very interesting. So Miss, <coughs> he, he repeated many times his project. But what does it mean to repeat? To repeat is not the same as to replicate. Repeti repetition, it means to reproduce the differences of the same, of the same. But replication, it means to reproduce the same of the differences. So the, the big difference between the two is that the replication produces homogenization. The, uh, See, the replication, the reproduction produces the richness of architecture. And uh, if we can uh, keep uh, these two differences, and we can, uh, how do you say, uh, put it together with the word of architecture, re uh, reproduction 
No, not the reproduction, I'm sorry. Um, sorry, repetition is linked with the arche, and replication is linked with techne. So to to replicate, to replicate, it means to be inside the notion of arche. Yes, but today arche is completely missing in the discipline of our, in, of our work. Why? Because the contemporary culture, the paradigm of contemporary culture, is based on, as I said before, in, uh, in techne and science. And what does it mean, the differences between techne and science and uh, arche? So arche, first of all, belongs the humanistic knowledge. Techne is just, just is scientific knowledge. Yes, but techne mainly is based on presence, real, real presence. But arche is based in notion of absence. And there is another still important question. Because today, the contemporary architecture, if I could ask to somebody, but tell me please, where comes our techne science, uh, uh, techne and science knowledge? F f from where comes our, our knowledge? So our knowledge, if we go back maybe 50,000 years ago, where the first man was uh, on the earth, there were no books at all, no dictionary, nothing. So. And our knowledge comes especially because we were interpreting the appear, the appear, and then we started to understand some meanings. So it means that the appear, and it's not the appearance, but the appear, the noun, is the first level of our to be on this earth. And first is the appear, and then there are meanings. So first is the appear, and then our knowledge. So, but uh, the appear, we can use another term to explain better the appear. is aesthetic. The appear is aesthetic. The aesthetic has two incredible domains. One is what is visible, and the other one is what invisible. So what is it? The between invisible and visible is, is, a very strong, is a very strong game for us. Because we see with our eyes, but we perceive with the eyes of our mind. And our judgment comes from the perceiving with our mind, much stronger than with our, with our eyes uh, of our body. But there is, a, there is one question that uh, is very important for me to, to, to discuss, and is the relationship between contemporary culture and the origin of our culture. So we said that the origin of our culture comes from the appear, or from the aesthetic. But contemporary culture is based in the paradigm of techne and science, but the techne and science says to us that everything is isolated. So it, the techne says to us that if I want to make these glasses, I produce the glasses from nothing. Before there is nothing, then becomes glasses, and then the glasses will go back again to the nothingness. So it means that the notion of becoming is, uh, is under our domain. I mean, are we really sure? It's, it's not so clear. Because if we go back to the origin of our knowledge, 
before every kind of knowledge, there is the appear, so the aesthetic. But the aesthetic has three fundamental rules, three, or three fundamental law. One, everything appears, or everything is aesthetic, what is visible and invisible. The second, if everything appears, or if everything is aesthetic, it means that everything are related. So, it means that this wood is able to see the floor, the floor, see the ceiling, the ceiling, the window, the window, the facade of the building, the, the star, the, the water, everything. So, everything in the field, in the domain of aesthetic is linked, absolutely linked. And this linked also what is visible and also what is invisible. So that question, and the third, the third law, is that the aesthetic doesn't care at all about our judgment, if we like or if we don't like. So the appear is like this. It happened. It's happened before everything. So, but our contemporary knowledge says to us that everything are isolated. So, but this is a big contradiction that conflict inside the name of architecture, because arche and techne are the two roots that belongs to the same noun. And techne is what is the dominable. But arche is indominable because the aesthetic is completely indominable. We didn't, I, I mean, we didn't create the world or the, or the universe or the stars or nothing. Just we found this. And we are to whom we are able to interpret this kind of a world. That's the question. So it means that our discipline is a very special and crazy discipline because one part comes from techne, for sure. We could say also the 50%, but the other 50% comes from another side, and the other side is what is indominable. So the, the differences between the two is absolutely <laughs> great because each project is the connection between two different directions. One is the direction of techne, where we can read the world in its own different parts. is the phenomenological world, and we use logic, uh, analysis, and the rationalism or rationality. So it means that we see the work with the, the all pieces uh, uh, spread apart. But the other part, the indominable, indominable world that starts since the beginning because belongs to the arche, needs another kind of attitude. And we can also, because we, we cannot dominate, because it's indominable. So the only chance that we have is to contemplate that word, contemplate, and the, and the device that we can use to contemplate the word, that word is the representation. So, and about that word, just we can catch just a little part. And we, need, and we can just take this little part and to put into our, our work. So, This, uh, the, another big di difference and another big, big problem is also the following, after what I said. The techne and science culture is a one kind of knowledge that doesn't care about us. Zero. Because 
taken in science give to us rules. Rules, procedures, um, how do you say, formulas, everything. Yes, but the question of shape, on the question of shape, taken in science, they cannot say anything. Zero. The shape comes always through us. Through us. Absolutely. And this question, it means that another big, another big uh, thought. Our, our structure, and then I'm speaking about us, our structure is the same of architecture. So architecture is split in two. And also us, we are split in two. This is my physical body, and you can see my body, and I am different than you, but each of us, we are the individual. No, no, no question. But individual is a neutral term. But we are individual. Each individual has its own body, but also we have our own interiority. And how is connected our interiority with our body? Today, our interiority doesn't exist at all. Because the interiority today is in the internet. It's just outside us. And we apply what technics says to us through rules. So we don't know nothing about how we are able to shape the shape. And to shape the shape comes from us. Because our interiority is big as the universe. And we see with our eyes also the external universe. So we are like a hourglass. Like this, this image, this is a symbol, this metaphor, you can call whatever you want. The hourglass is the perfect uh, image for us. Because we are the neck of these two, of these two, the, of the two vases. One is the external universe made by real things, and the other is our interiority, and our interiority is the is has the same size as the universe. So, because we are the neck, and the external and internal goes back and forth endless time. So it means that we are really the matrix of what we do. So if our um, individuality today is smashed into the notion of arbitrariness, the opposite of arbitrariness is our singularity. And the singularity is exactly what's happened between in between the two vases of the hourglass. So each hour work, it means that it, it will become, because we are a matrix of the entire universe, yes, but our individuality needs to go so deeply to understand which are the richness that belongs to us and we don't know. Because the knowledge is to give us the capability to understand which are the matrix of the shape that we have already in our soul. Because what is external to us is just the reflection of our soul. So maybe you heard uh, James Hillman, that uh, was a US uh, psychanalyst, and uh, and he asked uh, to the audience uh, once, and he, he wrote also, where is our soul? And, uh, and our soul, I mean, uh, is not at all in our mind or in our heart or in our knees. But we are walking, walking in our soul. So it means that what we see outside us, we have already in our soul, the all matrix that belongs to us, but in the same times belongs 
to the entire universe. So for this reason, the question of our individuality cannot stay any longer inside the notion of arbitrariness. But we should move towards the notion of singularity. And the singularity has two, mm, two different qualities. The singularity, it means that we have a very, a very short or a very few possibilities about our freedom. But when we are able to reach this freedom, because we discover the law that is inside us, and this law belongs also to the universe, to the dimension of the universality, it means that our freedom, even though it's very short, is very limited, becomes absolutely revolutionary. Josep Manderstam is a Hebrew poet, died in, in 1938, and he died very young. And he, was, uh, he died uh, in Vladivostok because uh, Stalin, he put, him, uh, he put him there. And he said something very interesting about, about our singularity. And he says that each of us, when we're born, we are singular. But we are singular only for one reason. First of all, because each of us are different than each other, no, no doubt. But our difference is, is, is even deeper. Because when we're born, we break, we break the shoulder of the time. Because we are the time. We are the entire sum of all times, the past and the future. And only our work is able to make a bridge and connect the fracture that we produce when we born. Yes, but this question implies that today the architect or us has not any responsibility because we apply the rules of techno and science and we are more or less anonymous and we are a uh, or a critical, but if if we should be or to reach the singularity, the architect is full of risk, full of risks. There is no insurance that's able to insure your uh, your work. You are alone, and you are lonely because. Architecture needs this kind of, uh, how do you say, this kind of uh, approach or this kind of attitude. Otherwise, our work is, is completely different. It's not architecture, it's something else. <laughs> now I'm going quite, quite fast uh, about uh, two projects. Uh, and then if we have time, I will show you some slides about models and, and so on. But this, uh, this first uh, project is very, is quite, it's not simple, but uh, I try to make it as simple as I can. Uh, last year, the Triennale in Milano asked to the, uh, he, uh, he called 10 Italian architects to design an ideal classroom for the future. And, uh, and then they did uh, this exhibition. But uh, the program to, to draw, to design this uh, ideal class, classroom was very strange because they gave us already the three different uh, system of rules. So for the primary school, for the secondary school, and also for the university. And each room should be 50 square meter plus uh, the high uh, three and a half. And then, uh, so, and I, and I, and I said, but sorry, why, why you call this show ideal, uh, ideal classroom if, I mean, we need to follow what you give to us? So, and I decided to, to give up from this rule, and I did uh, what I wanted to do. 
So, and I choose the Brunelleschi Dome in Florence. I choose this because Brunelleschi was, he started to develop the notion of modern ar architects. But the, the, the dome uh, in Santa Maria del Fiore is the best masterpiece for dome. I don't want to say only in Italy, but it uh, doesn't matter. And, uh, and then, f especially for this reason, because uh, I, I want, uh, I went different, um, a few times in Florence to, to teach. And uh, one, uh, some room, some class of the university were very close to the, to the Basi uh, Basilica di Santa Maria del Fiore. But they were, how do you say in cantina, in the cellar? C cellar? So you, you need to go down two floors in a very awful space. And then just outside, there were this incredible piece of architecture. So, and suddenly, last year, I decided to do this uh, classroom inside the dome. So the classroom, the project is made in two different uh, steps. One first step is this, is, the, um, is a balcony that goes around the frame of octagon inside the cupola. And the other one is a sphere, is outside the cupola and is near the lanterna. The first piece is here, and the other is just, you see this, uh, the bowl here. Okay. But here the students are, first of all, there are 93 students, 92 students that they can sit down around here with one teacher and they go one for the entire day. And here the students, they learn the fundamentals of each discipline. I mean, philosophy, theology, architecture, paintings, poetry, literature, history, whatever you want. And these 92 students, they will uh, go for three months, every day for three months. Then the second, second term is the second season, other 92, so it means that in one year here, it, we will get 365 students. But they learn the fundamentals, but they are floating on the void. So this, the, the floor of the cathedral is 53 meters down. But also, they have another big uh, void above, is the, 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 the cave of uh, the dome. And here is the paintings made by Vasari, is the Giudizio Universale, the universal judgment. So above their head and under their feet, there is void. But they are learning fundamentals. Then, and that's, okay, here. Then after that, after one year, the first uh, one student a day, he will enter here. So he's coming inside the, the dome, he's going here, and then here it will be a special uh, connection to go in, and he will stay one full day in this, uh, in this sphere. The sphere, if you look, goes around the lanterna, and it takes one full year to make this trip, the journey, the revolution, okay? So it means that during the, for each day, it moves only 11 centimeters, no more than this. And the students, when is inside, Oh, outside is gold, inside is gold, the, the sphere. But the sphere has a little, little holes, and he can see the sky, and he can see also down he, the, the floor of Florence. He can see this huge planet that uh, is the dome. But he learn his own singularity. He learn his own singularity because He's a stable in the sphere, but the sphere is moving. And he, has, he is not able to recognize that he's moving. So, 
just quickly. The sphere comes, the, the dimension between the sphere of a verrocchio and the big holes or eyes made by Brunelleschi. So, this, uh, uh, this project is just, a, is just a metaphor, but before to do this, I, uh, uh, I mean, I analyze also the materials and the cost to do this. It could be possible to make it, but it's impossible to make only because there is a prejudice about this. <laughs> but otherwise, it could be easy to, to do this. And it doesn't cost us so much. But it's ideal. So, finito. But also there is a, one question that is linked uh, very strong about what I said before. This project is, a, how do you say, is on the shoulder of history. But the history becomes the support of not about nostalgia, but about something completely new. But the project is on the shoulder of our predecessors. So now I'm introducing uh, also quite uh, fast uh, <clears throat> the project that I did uh, for the theater in, uh, in Gdansk. This is a competition made uh, in 2004 and, and the opening of the building it was uh, exactly 10 years uh, later. So. Just uh, I need to say a few words about uh, the program of the competition because otherwise everything becomes uh, incomprehensible. Uh, the competition was to design the new Elizabethan theater in Gdansk because in the 16th century there were already built the first Elizabethan theater in Poland. So, but. Uh, Many, for many reasons, uh, for fires and damages and war, it has been gone, and now they wanted to have the new Elizabethan theater. So the Elizabethan theater, the characteristic of this is that the, the center of the scene is in, uh, yes, the, the center of the scene is on the center of the public uh, audience. But the program, he wanted also to have the Italian theater. So, but the typology of Italian theater is completely different than, than the Elizabethan one because the, the, the central point of the vision in the Italian theater, this point is on the endless, it's on the infinite. So it means that there is a contrast between the central point of uh, Elizabethan and the Italian theater. This is the first uh, question. The second, the second question is about what does it mean theater? Because if, if, if I were just glue on, uh, on our time, so you, you design a theater, yes. But if I extend my horizon to the origin of the theater, the theater for us comes from the Greek theater. So, but the Greek theater is the theater where is the archetype for polis, for the city. Before, in, in the Greek time, before to, to have the polis, the consciousness how to build polis, you had the theater. But why first the theater and then the polis? Because the theater, it was, a, it was made because the old citizen, they need to go to the theater, and they were understanding the passage from the truth from mythos to logos, from mythos to philosophy. So that's the biggest question about the theater. So the theater is the way where all citizens were learning how to live together not how to live by themselves, to live together. For this reason, and after that, 
It was burning police or the city. So, but I cannot forget that today, go to the, to the theater, you are going for your pleasure, for your amusement. But I could not forget also its origin. Then there is another big uh, question that uh, uh, influence a lot the, the project, and, and is that the Poland, after the Second World War, until 2004, she was able to leave Russia and to turn his gaze towards Brussels towards Europe, because in 2004, Poland became officially part of European community. And he left the, how do you say, the sovereign of, uh, of Russia. So it means that in 60 years, there, there was this incredible shifting from west, from east to, to west. And also, this question is not easy, because in the meantime, exactly in Gdansk, it, it born the, how do you say, the, the trade union for workers. And these workers, they uh, were the workers for the shipyard, and, uh, and um, the trade union w was, at that time in 1970s, were illegal. There were, uh, some workers were, <laughs> They, they was killed. So, but Solidarność, with lack of Awensa, was an incredible forces to demolish the Berlin Wall in the 1989. And all central area of Europe, it was completely changed in political sense, completely. So, I could not forget also the structure of history for, uh, for the theater. So, now, I can show what we have done with this theater. So the theater, first of all, the, the, the most important things was how, if we could or not to build uh, this, uh, the roof. The program required to have the roof, but the Elizabethan theater was without a roof. So for sure, you cannot uh, build a new theater today w without any roof. And so for this reason, we decided to open the roof with the wings. We could open it also by sliding, to have a sliding roof. But to, to have a sliding roof, th there were no any, how do you say, any meaning for the, in for the inner space because the proportion of the space be, became the same, but if you use it to open like this, suddenly the proportion becomes double and everything is different. And then at, at, the, at the end, we understand also why uh, we choose this kind of a solution. So now we can keep going quite fast. So very quickly, this is the most uh, fundamental elements uh, of the composition. So this is... Uh, like this. This is the a side, a sidewalk high six meter. This is the structure of the, the theater is 12 meter high. This is the wings. This is the wood uh, structure of uh, the audience, the, the tower for mechanism and the offices, that's it. Now you can see the differences between outside and inside. Outside, the structure is, has to be very rough and solid because the forces that uh, push on the top of the wings uh, are very strong and uh, we could have a very, um, how do you say, <laughs> the, we had to dimension very well the, the, the wall, but the inside, the, the structure was in wood, as it was the original, and the three level and also the module of uh, the, the structure inside, it came exactly from the, from the traces that we found in, in, in the place. 
So now some images about uh, already the So this is plus the level plus uh, six. And uh, an another question, because this is a experimental uh, theater, uh, one of, uh, of the requirements was very clear that the, the theater should be uh, used in all kind of manner. So they can organize a representation or performances also outside. And, uh, and sometimes they have uh, uh, the actors that they go through or down the walls, external, internal, doesn't matter. So here we are on, on the level plus 12. I'm sorry, just here. This is one part of the wings open. This is the city. The theater from here looks like a sarcophagus. It's possible, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, I like this. <laughs> so this is on the, the void on, on that one. So one big problem was, Don, I didn't want to have anything on the roof, nothing. No chimney, no for air, for nothing. And it has been very tough because, do you see this too? This is the air for, for the closet that's under. And then, and then I mean, uh, now it's, uh, it's made with brick, and, but in any case, that's I had to, to keep it, even though I fight every day. Not that. So this is the roof, and the roof is the fourth stage, because oh Shakespeare says in the, in the temp yes in the tempest no 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 in uh, as you like the old world oh I'm sorry the old world is a scene. So in this case, if the old world is a scene, especially the, the sky is a scene. And for this reason, it's like this. So just. Uh, now you, you see now some pieces that uh, <coughs> is the um, still uh, still a structure for the mechanical movement. And, uh, and these pieces were made in, uh, it has been made in Spain. In the meantime, the, the wings were made in, uh, in Poland. So. This is the model before to start. Uh, and uh, for the tender of the roof under construction, under construction, but almost done. Here it is, everything is done. Inside. But uh, here are two, two images and I have to say something about this. Another bigger question for, for, for me and for us was, how is possible to design a new theater after Teatro del Mondo, the Aldo Rossi that he did uh, 15 years ago? And, uh, and, and the answer was not, not, not so easy, but why, why I like a lot and why we like a lot uh, um, the Teatro del Mondo. Because the Teatro del Mondo, it has been built uh, for Biennale. I don't remember exactly what, in which year, but... Uh, and then after six months, he disappeared. 
So it, it was built in Marghera, and then there were a, a huge, um, uh, how do you say, raft, 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 rafting, raft, and and went through Venice. He stopped on the Giardini della Biennale, and then he went to Dubrovnik, and then after that they dismantled and disappeared. So the. This uh, the theater designed by Rossi. The main, the the most important idea that he built this was the notion of uh, apparition. That's the question. It's very strange that one architecture ap appear and disappear in six months, because when something appear and disappear. You have your, mem uh, your record in your mind in a very special way. So, but the fundamental of this is the, the apparition. So after that, I started with another notion. It was in, I don't know if in English, kenosis. Kenosis, kenosis it means uh, the em emptying, to, make, to be empty inside you. And it's a, a theological. Sorry, it's a theological uh, image, very, very impro important. But in in this case, I really wanted to have the notion of emptying. But all the problem with this question was how how we can have the forces of the void and the light against. The, the, the outside the shell. This kind of composition is not so easy because the power of uh, when you open and, and the light comes down suddenly and the inner, the inner body of the theater becomes void, how react the walls outside the, outside the theater? And, uh, and for sure there is, there is a window in, the, in, in this, in, in this uh, theater. But you don't see from outside any window because it has to be absolutely rough and strong because otherwise the, the forces when you, when you open this destroy the, 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 the character of the shape. And then, now, this is another question very important. So to, to lift up the, the arm, is a natural uh, gesture that is inside us. So we lift up the arm uh, because uh, for pain, for rebellion, but also for to thank, to thank something. In, in, uh, in this case, was a rebellion, but also a hope. And he's a Lech Wałęsa, the, I mean, one of the founder of Solidarność in, uh, in Gdansk. So, and in this case, the theater wanted to, to lift up its own uh, wings. And in this case, we were connected with the original typology of Elizabethan theater, but also we were answering in a very uh, best way with, the, with this gesture that belongs to humankind, belongs to, to us. So last uh, image is, uh, do, do you recognize this guy? Is uh, uh, Andrew Vida. Andrew Vida, is the, it, it was, and, and I show this image only because he died just uh, three weeks ago uh, at the age of 90 years old. And uh, he was the most important uh, film director uh, in, uh, in Poland. And his, uh, his movie, and he also won the, um, the Oscar for this movie, he did two movies about Gdansk. He did uh, the Iron Man and the Marble Man. And, and with these two movies, he won the, the, the Oscar, as I said. But in the Iron Man, or in the both movie, the worker are the worker they, that they, uh, they make bricks. I don't tell you the story because it should be too long, but it's just to commemorate his... Uh, and he was in the jury of the, of, of the competition also. So, 
I'm going very fast because there are some images. Just to, this is the, the pavement of the Basilica di San Marco in Venice. It calls the Shroud of Stone. This is some models about the, the domes of the churches in, in Venice. Just three. But we did uh, 20, 22, 23 churches. Oh, this is the church, uh, the Salutes Church. Okay. This is Naples. The project was to, to design a, what do you say, uh, a big uh, space for music, for the for the experimental music. And it's completely underground. Because you know that Na Naples has two levels. It's the level above the, the earth, and one level is below the earth. It was full of caves, uh, but really full of caves. Very interesting. Uh, how do you say, underground uh, structure. So, this is Valdagno, it's 100 kilometers far from Venice. But just, uh, just I show this plaster model. So, but th th this model has 2,300 2, level of cardboard because you do the positive, then you do the negative, and then you have the final result of this. And then you have to draw first the entire, how do you say, the entire shape of this. Then you have to draw each level. Each level you have to draw, and then you have to, to cut the cardboard, to glue. It takes a lot of time. <laughs> yes, but, and if you do a mistake, you throw away everything. That's even, even worse. So, so this is Venice. In this case, we draw the underground level of uh, the water because this is Piazza San Marco. Chiesa della Salute, the Salutes Church, Chiesa di San Giorgio, and this is, um, how do you say, uh, Sank, Sank Island, but this is a, a train station, is the, the station for the subway, because there is a project in, in Venice to make a, a, like a subway, and the problem is not to make the subway because the subway goes quite deep. It's uh, 20, 24 meters down, the, down the, the water. But the problem is how to go up. And uh, in this case, oh no, just, just uh, in this case, uh, I decided that we could not design any station with a roof or and then we go out from the train, you need to go out and see just uh, the sky. So it means that uh, when you are here, you need to go up slowly, and then slowly the Venice appear. So it means that all this project, I did uh, three different projects about this, but to do this we, we produce, we had to make at least more than 20 models but the title of the, these projects are to go up to Venice, even though Venice is completely flat, but to go up. Okay, let's go. So this is uh, Cortina d'Ampezzo, a very well-known uh, uh, place to ski. And, uh, I like to ski, but uh, I don't like to ski in Cortina, but I ski just uh, like here, more or less. But Cortina is here. But this is a drawing that we do to make the model. And uh, so this is just a little, little piece of uh, what we have to cut. 
So this is the positive in cardboard in different phases of working. It's the same model. Almost done. Now it's done. It's very really interesting. And this is the, the matrix. And the matrix, I think that the people know already, cost a lot of money. Very a lot. So if, um, here was uh, to analyze and to make a project about the landscape of uh, Cortina. And we did uh, three different models, each uh, in, a, in a different scale. But I go fast. So. All of this Cortina. And this is the other point of view. Okay. This is another project made in the center of uh, Italy, in Abruzzo. So, and this, uh, this piece of uh, mountains is inside, uh, is, it has been described by Dante in, di in his Divina Commedia. Okay, let's go. Again, this is... A, Abruzzo, another part, Gran Sasso. The chain of Gran Sasso. And we cut uh, the level, we did a special model on the level of 1,000. This is the level 1,000. And here is a, a very long gallery. And here there is the scientific laboratory the nuclear laboratory. Okay, it doesn't matter. Okay. Always Gran Sasso. This is Vorso. The model represents uh, Vorso just uh, under the bombing uh, at the end of the uh, Second World War. So this is the Palace of Justice and Culture where I did uh, a project and I cut all the, the, this space that belongs to the, this um, building. That this building it has been, it, it, it was a gift by Stalin to Poland. But in this case, I, I designed this uh, raft because already this building, now he is looking it was looking Moscow, but in this case, it was looking Brussels. And it is going, it starts to go down. So here is Venice, and then we did this model to analyze this landscape here because they, they wanted to put a new road here. So just one thing, so when we did this model, and now I go back here, so here is the model. But we knew already something very interesting that we reproduce here, uh, here. So l look at this, look at this, this is, oh, from this point, the landscape from here to here, towards the, the sea, the landscape is under the level of water. So this is a channel higher than the level of the, of, the, of the ground. So all this system of the landscape is possible to keep in this way because there are a thousand and thousand, uh, how do you say, pump. They control the level of water because otherwise this I call the, inv mm, the inversion of the landscape, because the landscape here is positive, and from here to here is negative. And here is our lovely city. OK. So you can see Mar Nero, the Black Sea, the Red Sea, and uh, because we were designing uh, a mosque 
in, uh, in Venice that we are here. The lagoon for another project, Venice. Cairo, this is the delta of uh, the Nile. But I, I, I cannot explain too much because otherwise we lose too much time. This is the facade. This piece is long, uh, almost two meter and a half. It's quite heavy. So here, Ferrara. Very interesting uh, competition because uh, it was to transform um, how do you say, carcere, jail, uh, prison. prison, yeah, prison, into a museum. And Ferrara has a beautiful, really beautiful wall around it. This is, of course, is a, doesn't exist in this way because this is the real extension of the wall now. Here is there is this break, but, uh, but Ferrara has incredible uh, walls around it. Very nice. It's a very huge park. So again, the system of water that rains uh, through the city, and uh, so always model in the cluster. So th and the space where we are working was here, he here. Let's go. Again, reading how was this different uh, typology of the of the wall. So also this is a model to understand how works the, 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 the how do you say, the, the topography of, um, of the city. Okay, now as it is today, and this is ghetto, it was a ghetto, this one. Is understandable in English, ghetto? Yeah, okay. So, and here is the project is here, but the project is doing this. Oh, okay, another analyzation. Here you can read just a little bit better. Because the wall goes here, and then you need to go and enter into the museum and go out and keep going again. So the museum becomes the luck of, of the wall. But what is interesting is that the ghetto um, sorry. The ghetto where was the, the, the part of the city where the, the Jews were closed. And they could not go out uh, after a certain hour during the day. But in this case today, the, the, the prison becomes a museum. And this museum is the museum for Hebrew culture. So in this case, the museum becomes the key and the luck of the entire city. But I lost the competition. So it's obvious. So let's go. Let's go. Just. This is Istanbul. Parma. Milano. The Po River. Appennini. And we did this project here. Ah, I'm sorry, here. Okay. Let's go. This is the system of river. This is a, this model is quite big because it's three meters you, you, times two and two and a half. I 
I prefer don't say anything because otherwise. Uh, now you, I don't want to. This is South Africa, Port Elizabeth. The Matrix. And this is the last. Uh, this is the last project that we are doing now. Is on the Lampedusa Island. That is here, Lampedusa. Yes, is this one different scale? But here we 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 have to analyze the topography of the of the how do you say of the of of the sea. Okay. So here you see. This is the whole, because we are doing a cathedral, but it's completely invisible. This is the hole for the, the, the only high that he has. And this is um, one project for New York. Another hole. I do that many holes. <laughs> yeah, but I tell you why. So, no, I have many things to say about this hole, but <laughs> I like also to. So, but this um, image synthesizes quite a lot uh, the one question. So, this is the level zero. And we started to make this project completely underground. This project is just sunk into the earth. This one opened just to the sky. And this is go around like a planet. So it means that architecture, the fundamentals, are not only our ground. It's one, two, three, for endless layer. And I think I stop. Thank you.